purpose of the diaphragmatic breath, it's obviously the diaphragm, but the diaphragm is just one part of three. Right. So we have pelvic floor and your skull. Right now, most people just in this modern era, they're just so stimulated all the time. So she was sitting down and just driving. There's constant stimulation. The body is always in reaction mode okay. or the right. sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight. At, at some level, they're in a little bit more fight or flight all yes. the time. So what happens in that process is the diaphragm doesn't descend down. All right? Behind the diaphragm, got this right here. I'm gonna add in the diaphragm. The diaphragm's way up there. But I'm gonna add in, where's your chest? Look at the adrenal glands. Diaphragm's way up into that chest up there. Look at where the adrenal glands are located. They're pretty much touching the diaphragm. Yeah, well, that's not by accident. Huh. That's on purpose. The adrenal glands need the diaphragm to move down to let them know to shut, shut off, oh, not be in such a responsive mode oh, wow. all the time. So when you're constantly chest breathing or that high hernia that you were experiencing, that, that, that pressure's been pulled up, the diaphragm doesn't really drop down. The adrenal sense, oh shit, we must be under diaphragm, we must be under stress. stress yeah. So they constantly run that program and you live your life that way yeah. over and over again. And it just starts to break you down and, and fatigue you. So totally. What we're, the whole purpose of what we're doing is to get that diaphragm. Oh, actually, let's make him a her. Yeah. Wait, there we go. Do you mean her and him? Fair enough. <laughs> uh, let's, what we're trying to do here is grab that diaphragm all the way up into the chest and bring it down. All right? Gotcha. The only way you're going to be able to really do that is with a stable spine. So if I take this uh, general off, you'll see in the front of the spine right here is this ligament. Okay. Well, that's the anterior longitudinal ligament. Not important what the name is. The purpose of it though is you see how the diaphragm attaches right into the front of the spine. And it connects down to the pelvic floor all the way down there via the same ligament. So they are an extension of each other. Oh, wow. There's a diaphragm here and there's a diaphragm here and they both have a common place on the spine attached by the, this ligament. So a stable spine will allow both of those to move. Both of those moving will feed a stable spine. So we have to work those together. So when you can't breathe properly or you lose your posture, it's because these two areas don't have control. They're not, they're, they're always, they're firing in a reactionary, a reactionary state. Just like your adrenals always being on, being reactionary. Yeah. Digestive issues go to, you know, they come up because your body in fight or flight can't digest very well. It's not important. Right. You know, like a, a boxer or a fighter going out and they're throwing up right before the, you know, they're so nervous. Yeah. That's an extreme level of the same thing that's happening to you, or happening to a lot of us right now. All right, so the whole purpose of when we add this in is to be able to move and move pressure around this and get the diaphragm to go. But it's not just the diaphragm moving. We're going to add in all these muscles here. You got your outer layer obliques, we're gonna hide those for a second. Outer layer oblique, hide those. Internal oblique, hide those, hide that. Rectus abdominis, 12 pack, hide that. Now we're down to transverse abdominis. And this muscle was made famous by Arnold Schwarzenegger when he did that, that pose. He's fighting and he's, uh, he's flexing. And he's sucking in that diaphragm. He's drawing all the way in. His waist is like tiny. That's because he's using this transverse abdominis muscle. It really doesn't do much movement, like active movement. What it does is it expands and contracts. It's what pumps air in and out here. So when you take a big belly breath, Big belly breath, like Buddha belly, yep. And now draw it in from here, exhale. That's that muscle. That muscle's like a piston, like a squeeze, like a, uh, an assist, a yeah, squeeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see it attaches right through the front and all the way in through the back, all right? So when you, if you maintain your posture, you'll feel that muscle tighten yeah. all the way up. It's okay. That's what you want actually actively pumping, all right? In order to get that breath, we'll hide the, by the abdominals. In order to maintain a stable diaphragm like we were talking about, before you exhale, you're gonna to wanna to have a slight pelvic floor engagement. You've heard of Kegels and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. It's, that's about 25% of it. These muscles are on the inside of the hip. You have to almost imagine contracting those muscles. Imagine contracting the area above the sacrum, up to the belly button. You have to, you can't really, we can't see that you're doing it. It only happens internally. And that slight contraction will help stabilize the bottom of the spine. When that spine is stabilized, the diaphragm up, up top goes, all right, I have stability. I have a basement that's gonna be working for me. It can start to contract and move in and out. All right? The, uh, 
can see this, that's the belly button right there, it's the umbilical line. In order to help engage that, we've got our, we'll add in the front side of the abdominals. Let's take the muscles away. Oh, here we go, this is what we wanted. I don't have, I don't have the best representation of connective tissue here, but there's a whole bound area of connective tissue, scarpus fascia, all this stuff. That's gonna help contract when you draw your belly button down to your spine. Okay. I want you to bring this like all the way down to the spine. So you have your now your lumbar curve that's here. Yeah. You don't wanna change that, but you wanna just suck that in down to the spine on the exhale. Okay. You're gonna add the pelvic floor contraction, which that's really gonna start the whole thing, the pelvic floor contraction. You're gonna draw this down. Everything is, is sort of, you're thinking of like a meetup place. Here, I can actually draw it. Imagine this is your belly. That's your belly button right there. There's this imaginary meetup place about two to three inches in, about three inches up, and they're all going to this, this area, this common area. Yeah. It's, it's not a structure. It's a place that we're imagining. Yeah. Chinese actually hold it. It's a house of chi. It's really, oh, yeah. it's a deep ball of chi in there. Okay. So uh, cool. for structural purposes, we'll just call it the imaginary zone. Sure. That's where we want to bring everything into okay. from the lower half. That will set stability for the diaphragm to drop all the way down. As we drop the diaphragm down, the organs perform better. We want pressure on the organs. The organs love this feeling of the diaphragm pushing down on them. That signals that the body is relaxed. So, the whole purpose. Sounds great. All right? Cool. Thank you. Nice. Uh, we're just upstairs. Okay. I am, but not professionally.